Today's topic, seven celebrities who mastered the law of attraction. Today I want to share seven stories, seven opinions and seven facts about seven celebrities that have mastered the law of attraction, that know how to manifest their dreams and that already manifested their dreams so that you can use them as role models. And I also want to share exactly what they believe in and what they said and what they did in order to attract their dreams, in order to manifest what they really wanted, in order to become rich, successful, famous and truly abundant in their life. And of course, the one thing that they all have in common is that these celebrities have found their true calling. Because only when you found your true calling and when you are living your true calling, will you allow yourself to be in such a high vibration every day that attracting money, attracting love, attracting success, attracting abundance will actually be possible for you. Because if you're working in a job every day for 8 to 10 hours that you hate, that you don't enjoy and you know deep down, and if you're honest to yourself then you know this feeling, you know deep down that it's not your true calling, then it will only make you miserable and of course then you're not in a vibration where you can attract what you want. And that's why all these celebrities at some point decided to follow their true calling. It wasn't always easy, but they decided to follow their calling. And if you are ready to discover your calling and to then follow your calling, then you can check out the link in the description. And now allow me to start with the first celebrity, and that's Jim Carrey. You probably know him from movies such as Dumb and Dumber and all kinds of other funny movies that he starred in. And you might even know him from his talks about the law of attraction. He talked about it in several interviews and he's a firm believer in the law of attraction. And the one interview that I will never forget, the one interview that inspired me to believe even more in the power of the universe, is this interview with Oprah Winfrey, where he talks about how he wrote himself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered. And you have to think about it, that was as a time when he was broke, he was completely broke. It was not that he had like $5 million in the bank and he was like, yep, I'm gonna double that and make it to $10 million. No, 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 he was completely and utterly broke. And that's when he wrote himself a check for $10 million. Now think about it, really, really think about it. The energy and the belief and the yeah, just the sheer belief in your power to manifest that you need to have in order to realize this. And he realized it. He gave himself, I think, three or four years to achieve this goal. And then he got the $10 million when he played Dumb and Dumber. It's just still mind-blowing for me. I mean, I'm at a place right now where I can manifest so many amazing things in my life. But this story from Jim Carrey is still some next-level stuff. It's just amazing. And he said some very important things. He talked about that he went to the same spot every night somewhere on Mulholland Drive and he visualized himself having directors being interested in his work and having directors and producers saying that they liked his work and he just visualized it over and over and over again. And he actually says in another interview, our intention is everything and nothing happens without it. Or maybe he also says it in the Oprah interview, I don't remember it, but I just remember that he says that. Our intention is everything and nothing happens without it. And he also said, I believe in manifestation. I believe in putting a rocket of desire out into the universe and you get it when you believe it. Now think about what he just said. I believe in putting a rocket of desire out into the universe. Doesn't that sound familiar? At least it does to me. Because for me, Abraham Hicks was, you could say, the entity or the motivating force that motivated me to give the law of attraction, to give manifestation a shot. And it's exactly what Abraham Hicks says. It's always about your rocket of desire, your rocket of desire. And now I hear Jim Carrey talking about the rocket of desire. And it all flows together. And then there's Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey has a life story that still fascinates me. Many people don't know this, but at the age of 13, Oprah ran away from home because she suffered several forms of abuse and with 14 she became pregnant but her son was born prematurely and he died shortly after birth. And this story really touched my heart because I was also born prematurely, my twin brother died during birth and I only survived because of the heart surgery that I had. So yes, this story is somehow a little bit emotional for me. 
But what she made out of this suffering, it's just incredible. I mean, when you think about it, from this point of pure suffering, she became one of the most successful, powerful and influential women on the planet. And in one interview, I heard her saying something very interesting. The interviewer was asking her if she still creates vision boards to manifest things. And she just said, oh, I don't vision board anymore because I'm such a powerful creator. I'm so good at manifesting. It's not the exact quote, but she says something along these lines. And she also describes in another interview how she got the part in the color purple, how she had almost given up all her hope, but she wanted it so, so bad. And this one night she prayed to God and said something like, I want it, I want it, but if you don't give me the chance, it's okay. I wanted to thank you actually for giving me this chance to play this role in the color purple, but I let go. And when she let go, then her prayers were answered and she got the role in the color purple. And that's also a big manifestation lesson that if you come from this needy place of I need it, I need it, I need it, then you won't get it. But if you put out, as Jim Carrey says, this rocket of desire into the universe and then you let go, then you can attract what you want because then you can attract who you are because you are no longer attached to that thing that you want in a needy way, but you're open to what the universe provides you with. And there's also another young man who really understood the law of attraction and the power of manifestation, and that's Big Sean. He's a rapper, songwriter, and he's, I think, currently under the label of Kanye West, and Kanye West is also someone who I want to mention in this episode. So yes, they are linked together and they both believe in the law of attraction. And in an interview, Big Sean said, everything we can think is real, and if not, we can create it. And he also said that you just have to capture that feeling that's the easiest way to manifest what you want. And it's the same thing that I always tell you. It's all about the feeling. I mean, you've heard me in so many episodes and you will hear me in so many episodes in the future say that it doesn't matter if you write down, I want this, I want this, I want to be rich, I want a lover. But if you have this negative vibration, then you won't be able to attract it. But if you truly believe it, and you feel it, when you feel the emotion, how does it make you feel to be healthy? How does it make you feel to hold your lover in your arms? How does it make you feel to hold this money in your hand? How does it make you feel to sign the contract for your dream house? How does it make you feel? It's all about the feelings. And Big Sean understands that. And that's why Big Sean found his true calling, lives his purpose, and makes millions with his music. And the next one on my list is Will Smith. There's one funny line from him, and I think it goes something like this. He says, we live in a universe where 2 plus 2 equals 4, but it only equals 4 if we accept that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And now you could be saying, okay, Will can't really do math, but that's not the point. It's not about math. It's about you create your reality with what you believe in. If you believe that you're broke and that you're destined to stay broke or that you're destined to work in a job that you hate, which is something that millions of people out there do every single day. I mean, when you think about it, this is something that makes me, yeah, I don't want to say angry because I don't want to mess up my vibration right now, but it makes me wonder. Let's call it, it makes me wonder why in today's world so many people don't live their true calling. Why they accept this idea from society that we have to do something that we don't like 10 hours a day or in the best case 8 hours a day for the next 50 years until we can then retire with 65. It doesn't make any sense. And it didn't make any sense for Will Smith. That's why he became one of the most famous and successful actors in the world. And it also doesn't make any sense for anyone who knows the power of manifestation and law of attraction, because then you know that the words that Will Smith said are true. What you believe creates your reality. And he also said that he wants to represent the idea that you can do whatever you want. And he read that in his favorite book, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho is a book that I also read years ago. It's something that I can highly recommend that you also check out. It's just an amazing book. And actually, he's not on my list, but Paolo Coelho is also someone who believes in the law of attraction. I mean, you don't even need to listen to an interview from him. You already know that when you consider the fact that he writes 
his books in a way that is so in alignment with the message of the law of attraction. And he also said that when you really want something, when you really feel it inside, you always get it. But he also said, you get it no matter if it's positive or negative. And this is something that I had to learn the hard way. Like I already told you, I was working very, very hard on myself in the last couple of months on overcoming my trauma from the heart surgeries and all this trauma inside of me that for a long period of time I didn't even know that I had it, but I was having all these typical textbook reactions people have when they have to deal with trauma that they didn't resolve and all kinds of behavior that now is so far from my reality. It's so far from myself. It's this old self that I no longer am. And this is what Paolo Coelho meant with that. That when you're trapped in this low vibration, in this negative energy, you will attract these things. And now I'm proud that I'm a new self. I'm a new me. And if you attract terrible things in your life, then really think about your vibration. Think about your past trauma. Think about the things you have to work on. Because if I can overcome these things and become a better person, a person who's more in alignment, a happier person, a person who values honesty and authenticity, if I can change, you can change too. Paolo Coelho knows that and I know it. And the next person on my list is Conor McGregor, the fighter. The fighter from Ireland. Okay, don't take my Irish accent seriously because I don't have an Irish accent and I can't do it. But I think it's really interesting when he talks about the law of attraction. I once listened to an interview of Conor McGregor and Tony Robbins. And Conor McGregor said that he used to start practicing manifestation by just visualizing parking spaces and then getting them. And when you watch old interviews with him, it's so interesting. I watched this old interview where he was maybe a teenager or in his early 20s, like he had pimples all over his face. And back then when he was broke, he didn't have anything in his life. He said, I'm an up and coming fighter and you will see me, I think he said on the big stage or something like that. And back then when he was completely broke. And he also said that even though I was driving a car that I had to push start, in my head, I was driving a car, like a sports car, in California. And now I'm driving a sports car in California. And that's the power of the law of attraction. And the next person on my list is Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey is a TV show host, and he's also an author. And I love this guy. He's one of my favorite TV show hosts. In fact, I still remember when I was at a low point... I watched one of his, yeah, you could say talks in his Steve Harvey show, where he talked about how he jumped. He always describes it as you have to jump at some point. And he shares this really touching story where he, yeah, where he washes himself, I think if I remember it correctly now, he washes himself in the toilet or in the bathroom of a hotel and he's full of soap and then people come in and he was just crying and crying because he had hit such a low point and for me this was so resonating it was like oh damn yeah i feel like that right now but he also said over and over again when you jump you bruise yourself a little bit and then at some point the parachute opens and he says things like like attracts like and you're a magnet whatever you put out you attract and if you can see it in your mind you can hold it in your hand and i totally believe in what steve harvey says because it's true like attracts like you can only attract a loving relationship if you feel love, if you love yourself. And you're a magnet. Whatever you put out is what you attract. And if you can see it in your mind, then you can hold it in your hand. This is so, so true and so powerful. And the last person on my list is no other than Kanye West. And Kanye West said in an interview that his mother made him believe in himself so much that he can do whatever he wants to do and accomplish whatever he set his mind to that he continued to do that even though everyone else around him told him to stop and to give up. And I don't know if you agree with me, but Kanye did the right thing because now he's a billionaire. And he said, I refuse to follow these rules that society has set up that control people with low self-esteem. And yes, it's true. Our society does that. Our society controls us with the belief that you need to do a job that you hate for the rest of your life and that this will then be your life. And of course, then you have low self-esteem. Of course, if you don't find and follow your true calling, you will feel miserable because you don't do what you truly love. But the biggest breakthrough that I had in my life when it came to realizing my dreams 
was that I finally allowed myself, and yes, this is a process of allowing, I allowed myself to find my true calling. And I struggled with this idea of finding my own life purpose for such a long time. And if you struggle with this too, if you're currently stuck in a job that you don't like, if you have problems manifesting the things you want in your life, if you're not every day on a vibrational level that allows you to attract the things that you want. And when you're really honest to yourself, then you know exactly what this vibrational level is that you want to reach and if you are on this level right now or not. And if you're not on this level, then I would highly recommend that you check out the link in the description and finally find your true calling and live your true calling. And by doing that, you will manifest amazing things in your life. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please send out some love to the YouTube universe by giving this video a big, big thumbs up. And I would also appreciate it if you would leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think about my video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to click on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video for you.